All right, so here's the Cali raised catalytic converter shield. And I decided to get this after I know a couple of people who have had their catalytic converter stolen. And so I got a, a shield here. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. Here's a bag of hardware, got a sticker. So this is stainless steel. This is this is thick. This is heavy, and this is this is very good. So we got one for the driver side and one for the passenger side. You see, it, it's marked here P for passenger side and D for driver side. Now, we're not supposed to paint these because it's stainless steel and it gets very hot. And so they recommend no painting, just put it on just like this. Okay, catalytic converter shield fits 2014 to 2023. Fifth gen forerunner, made with 12 gauge 304 brushed stainless steel, easy bolt on instruction, made in the US. Here's a QR code, looks like for more shopping. Um, and yeah, overall looks very, very solidly put together. All right, let's get it installed. So the first step is we are going to take this rubber little bumper and we're gonna set it right inside this. So with the shield cupped upwards. This fits right in that hole with the wide side on the top here. So there's like this little flange that has to fit inside there. So you don't cut your fingers. Now you can see it's all the way flush and put in there now. So that's the first step. So the general process, first we're going to unbolt this brace. There's two bolts here and two bolts here. We're going to unbolt that and get that out of the way. Next, this is the transmission support beam held in place by two bolts here and there's two bolts on the other side. We're going to loosen each one of those bolts one at a time and we're going to replace each bolt one at a time. And the reason you only do one at a time is because this still has to support the weight of the transmission. If you try to take both out, the whole thing will come crashing down. So the first step is to loosen up this brace. I like to just loosen them a little bit first with a socket wrench before using any sort of driver, just so I can get a feel for it. Now this whole underside was undercoated and so there's a layer of undercoating that's covering everything. So it makes it uh, even more, uh, I guess, sticky. Okay, so we have that. Now next we are going to just loosen these bolts. And that is going to be 14 millimeter. Now remember, we're not taking these bolts off. We're just loosening them. Now you can see one of these bolts is loose and the other one is holding the pressure of the transmission support beam. So, in order to alleviate a little bit of pressure, you put the jack underneath here, and that alleviates a little bit of the pressure. But the first step is you can replace this one bolt easily without doing anything different. So you have the hardware here. You're first going to put a washer on, then this aluminum spacer. That's going to go through then you're going to put another washer, then you're gonna put this lock nut. Okay, so I have a jack on here. I'm just gonna take a little bit of pressure 
a little bit of pressure off that transmission support until, okay, now you can see that this one is loose and now they are both loose. So it's supported by this jack. So now we can replace one bolt at a time. So again, it's going to go in this way, this way. We have the washer and the spacer. So we'll take this one out, put this one in, take this one out, and this one again with the washer and the spacer in. Now, we put a washer on each one and each one gets those lock nuts. Okay, so those are fairly secure. Now we're gonna push those in as far back as we can there now. So for the cross support, you just pick out two of the best bolts because the other two you are going to replace with these uh, special bolts with a unique design on the top, to the anti-theft design that takes a special, uh, a special bit that it comes with. So two of these bolts are gonna be replaced. So pick out the two best bolts. You can see those look pretty bad. So that looks okay. So I might go with these two bolts. And I'm gonna spray some fluid film on them. We are going to take this spacer, we're gonna push it towards this cross beam and we're going to take the washer and push it away from the cross beam so we have this nice space right here. We're going to do that for both of them and that is where is going to slide right in between here. So first you angle it up this way to clear that bolt in the front and now this can slide up like that. Now you can take this brace and just kind of fit it over here temporarily. Okay, you can see I just put an extension on this driver just to have a little bit more clearance. So now that we have these bolts that are snug but not tight, we can release this jack and we'll move this so we can get this crossed all the way over and into place. Now, you'll notice that there's some space here and it's a little bit hard to have this and try to push that into place while you're putting the screw in. So what I'm gonna do is put this jack underneath this arm and put some pressure on it to hold it all in place. So I'm going to also take one of our previous screws and make sure I have the hole lined up decently before I put that jack in place. Before I get that one really tight, I'm going to try to get this one in place also. So we have the security bolt here, and we are going to at least start one 
here where it's on this support beam. Okay, before we really tighten that, we're gonna see if we can get this other one in also. Now this one I wish was just a few threads longer. Now we will see if we can get this one in. Now we can start tightening everything down. We have all four bolts in place on this cross beam and we have the two big bolts in place across the transmission support beam. You can kind of see how tight and narrow that is in there. So uh, now you could tighten these bolts before you fasten this cross beam in place, uh, which that would give you more room to work on those bolts. But I wanted to make sure everything was lined up before I tightened everything. So that's why I went this way and uh, used that flat wrench there. Now you can release the jack. So the catalytic converter shield is overall a good investment. I looked up what it would take to replace the two catalytic converters if they're stolen off a 4Runner, and it would be between $1,500 and $2,000, which is just ridiculous. Especially with a lifted 4Runner, it's very easy to get under the 4Runner without having to jack it up, and so that makes it a little bit more of an easy target. So these uh, catalytic converter shields from Cali Raised are very, very high quality for the price, good value. So some things that I wish it would have came with is I wish that these bolts were just a little bit longer, and I kind of wish that the bolts would include four of these bolts per side, not just two. So I wish that both could be replaced and you didn't have to reuse some of the old bolts. These are all the tools that I used. I had an impact driver, I had some sockets. This is a 12 millimeter, and then this is a 14 millimeter. I had an extension, um, two different extensions. This is the key for the security bolts that it comes with. I had a few uh, hand wrench, socket, and then a flat wrench. I had a screwdriver just to help with some prying of things, uh, safety glasses, gloves. I also had some fluid film and this jack.